Renee for the iPhone blog. We're at WWDC 2010, and I am talking to Peter Sisson of Talk to Me, and you'll know him from Line 2 for the iPhone and iPad. Yes. Okay, so um, first I'm going to show you dual mode calling. This is on the iPhone, and then we'll switch to the iPad uh, in a minute. Um, so I've logged in, and here within the settings, I can. Uh, select which networks I want it to go over and I can even change the priority of the networks, move them around um, and change the order in which it tries networks. But the most typical is you want it to use VoIP when it can to save you money and then switch to cellular when VoIP isn't available. So if I go over here now, you can see it's going over VoIP, it's using Wi-Fi and I actually have a MiFi here uh, that I'm using. Um, I can switch it dynamically to cellular. Well, let's say I'm walking out the door um, and I know I'm not going to be on Wi-Fi, so now I can call a number. Um, let's do this one. And this is going over cellular. Now, it does a little trick when it does that. It's called cellular direct. So when it's going over cellular voice, it has to use the AT&T network. So what it actually did is you see a different number here. And you can't really hear it, but there's American Airlines um, auto attendant on the other side there. You can hear it a little bit. Um, so this is going over VoIP, but what it did is it called into our server, and simultaneous with calling into the server, it sent a message over the data network to our server. So the call and the data message of where to route the call met at the server at the same time. So even though there's a funny number here, the calling experience is the same uh, as uh, of, as calling, you know, from uh, uh, the regular phone, and that you dial the numbers, and then you put it up to your ear, and it starts ringing. It was transparent and to the end user. It's the user. The way you use it is unchanged, and that yeah. was a very important factor in how we designed that. Um, so let's go to the iPad, which is easier to demo to to look at um, some of the VoIP features. So um, what's neat about this is um, I'm using. MiFi, and basically with a MiFi, you actually turn your iPad. I need to set that to be longer. Um, I set my, I've turned my iPad or my iPod Touch into a truly mobile phone. Yeah. That because I bring my Wi-Fi with me, and so instead of getting a cell phone, you could get a MiFi and an iPod Touch or an iPad, and you'd have a cell phone. And just to note, it is much bigger than an EVO uh, 4G. So. <laughs> If you're worried about screen size, this thing is 9.7 inches of phone, right? <laughs> right, exactly. So let's take a look at that. Now, we haven't yet optimized um, for uh, the iPad yet, so it, it's just a, a blow-up, a 2x. Uh, that's in your roadmap? And it's in our roadmap. We'll be, we're going to do something so that if you rotate it, it'll expose more functionality, okay. <clears throat> particularly good for conferencing. So, um, you know, the, the app has all the things you would expect. It's got uh, visual voicemail. Apple did make us change the interface. We used to have the identical uh, iPhone interface that has the, uh, uh, you know, what it looks like with the uh, callback uh, and these buttons down here. What we did, they told us to get rid of that, so we did. They were really nice working with us. And so instead we have, we created a pop-up interface. Okay. And I can pause it, I can return the call. Uh, if I just hit that, then it's going to return the call. Uh, let's cancel that. Um, but one of the uh, the cool things, too, about this new interface is we added something which is forward by email. So I can now, I can uh, uh, basically um, put in uh, I can put in or add a message. Uh, I don't know how to get rid of this keyboard. Um, but uh, I'll say don't save. You can see, I'll, let me do it again so you can see the message. There's the message there. It's, it attaches an MP3 file. Um, and, and so it's easy if you get a message that you want to send to someone else. Um, good for business. Good for business yeah. people, which is really who we're up. Then my call history uh, is pretty familiar. Within the call history, I can get details. Um, I can also uh, you know, do things. Uh, I can add to contacts from voicemail, do all the things that you're used to. Within the contacts, you have a favorites, you have the contacts that are on your iPad or your iPhone, and then you also have contacts that you can upload from Gmail and other websites into our website. So I have like a thousand contacts here, <laughs> which I keep separate 
from my iPhone and iPad okay. contacts where I just want to get through things quickly. And then dialing um, is pretty straightforward. I'm going to call uh, FedEx this time. Um, and I'm going to show you conferencing because this is really great for conferencing because it has the speakers yeah. and the mic. So 800 uh, So you can hear that you'll hear this better because of the speaker phone. Um, so you can hear that. Now let's say I want to add a call. So you're familiar with this interface if you use iPhone conferencing. Um, now I'm going to add American to this, which is a little cruel because now the two voice auto attendants are going to fight with each other. If you wanted to be cool, you could have added UPS. That would have been funny. Yeah. <laughs> like a UFC fight. Right. <laughs> exactly. So I'll merge the two calls. You can see now this is a VoIP conference happening over Wi-Fi. Um, there is no, uh, I'm burning no cellular minutes. And I can add up to 20 callers to this. And the, the conference is actually server-based. So that if I were to drop out personally from the conference, the others would be able okay. to stay on the conference. Now another important thing um, that we have here is um, we have call waiting. So let's say I call my number from my iPhone. Um, actually, do you have your phone? Yep. One of the things, uh, you know, we're unable to place an AT&T call <laughs> right now as we just tried. We can't get an AT&T call. We're at WWDC. But we're having no trouble placing VoIP calls over MiFi. So I'm going to call my number now. Uh, 1415-223-5801. Uh, call. So, now one of the things that we have that no other VoIP, have, VoIP apps have is we have call waiting. So here's the call coming in. I can send a voicemail, hold an answer, or end an answer. So this is VoIP call waiting. Now you can see I've got the conference on hold, and I've got this call, which is, you can hear us. I can switch between the two, so I can switch between two call waitings, and then I can also merge the call. And now we have um, three calls. Uh, all, well, actually, FedEx dropped out, so we're down to two. <laughs> but um, so really interesting um, capabilities in terms of the power. Doing a lot of heavy lifting on the back end to make the user experience really good on the front end. Precisely. There's a lot. And I can also do things like transfer calls. Um, so there's a, a lot of functionality here. Um, and the cool things that we're adding are SMS, unlimited true SMS, phone number SMS, which means that you'll be able to place and receive SMS uh, to any phone on any network uh, worldwide. And, um, and then obviously OS 4.0 or iOS. 4. iOS, yeah. iOS <laughs> newly rechristened. Right. 4.0 support is coming uh, with backgrounding so that really having this in the background uh, able to receive a VoIP call uh, at any time is really going to en enhance its practicality. You'll be almost an equal citizen with a with a built-in phone from Absolutely. the carrier. Yeah. And you know, we met with uh, Apple yesterday, and uh, it's very clear that um, they uh, are embracing, a, you know, th the open platform, the open playing field, unless you're a porn app, obviously. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> You know, as far as, you know, I thought VoIP and SMS were uh, at risk, and it really, uh, I think they and the carriers realize that um, there are different revenue models that are going to yeah. be um, emerging, and an AT&T, obviously, Well, they're tiered the and capped data now. With tiered and capped data, and voice is going to be the free, unlimited thing, yeah. and data is where it's all headed. So what, what if, you're, if you're running voice over it, SMS over it, whatever, they're going to love you. AT&T will love VoIP under this model, because VoIP consumes a fair amount of data. Absolutely. So are you so, looking to have the iOS 4, point, iOS 4 version ready this year? Uh, this it'll be ready. Our goal, is, we have it already in beta internally, okay. although the iOS is actually still a little buggy. Yeah. Um, so we're waiting for the final bug fixes, but we hope to submit uh, in time for approval on the 21st when it goes live. And you're gonna, it's going to be North America, US-centric at first, and you said maybe eventually you're going to... Yeah, we are adding... Um, uh, support for seven the seven top iPhone countries um, outside of the U.S. and Canada uh, in the coming months. Excellent. Peter, thank you very much for your time. It is much appreciated. And this is the iPhone blog at WWDC 2010. Thanks. Thanks, Renee.